Small screen animation doesn't just belong to Hanna-Barbera anymore. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 best cartoons of the century so far. You don't even drive! Don't tell me you know how to fly one of these! I do not, but what I do know is how to think like a venture. For this list, we're looking at animated shows that have had the greatest impact on the 21st century to date. We're including shows that started in the late 90s, as long as they aired the majority of their run in this century. I am over The Simpsons! <gasps> well, what are you saying? I'm saying The Simpsons suck! Number 20. Big Mouth If The Simpsons was considered jaw-dropping back in the day, then Big Mouth would have made people's jaws drop right off. Oh, let's go, let's go. I'm coming, I'm coming. Not yet. That's why we gotta get to the bathroom, sweetheart. Inspired by Nick Kroll and Andrew Goldberg's own childhoods, this adult animated series exists somewhere between the blunt reality that middle schoolers face daily and their most inappropriate fantasies brought to life. It's a show that explores subjects like puberty and Planned Parenthood, but it also has hormone monsters and talking pillows. At times, the series is like a sex education course if it were taught by comedians with wild imaginations. All the flights of fancy and gross-out gags aside, the show is surprisingly relatable for anyone who's gone through puberty or is at that awkward stage in life. Plus, who doesn't love Coach Steve? Coach Steve? Welcome to Walgreens! Jesse, my friend who's a child girl. Meet Reese's Wetherspoons, my girlfriend who is things. Number 19. The Boondocks Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, this is not. Before she was an Oscar winner, Regina King voiced Huey and Riley Freeman, two opinionated African-American children living in a white suburb. I know about white people, too. Like when they talk, they say the whole word like this. When you're 10 and 8 years old, you're more inclined to voice your thoughts, no matter how much they might trigger others. That's exactly what the Boondocks did on a regular basis. Touching upon race relations, politics, and taboo subjects you definitely wouldn't see on a live-action sitcom, the show didn't just push people's buttons. It ripped their buttons clean off and refused to apologize. You are such an articulate young man. I'm trying to explain to you that Ronald Reagan was the devil. Its unfiltered commentary made The Boondocks not only one of the most controversial cartoons ever to hit airwaves, but also one of the most hilarious and provocative. Say you love America right now. Say it. The party's basic philosophy is... Say it! Number 18. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles You'd think with two long-running cartoon shows already under their belt, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise would be officially exhausted. This is about self-improvement, Raphael. It is not about winning and losing. Yet the new Nickelodeon reboot has taken all the best parts of previous incarnations to fashion what may be the franchise's most impressive outing ever. You are right. The showrunners have worked in a number of their own inspired signatures too, including some Beauty and the Beast style romance, ongoing parodies, morals that never feel forced, brilliant twists, and unique animation. Not to mention the catchiest rendition of the classic theme song you will ever hear. Number 17. Justice League from Teen Titans to Young Justice, DC has given us some of the century's best superhero ensemble pieces. This is a league mission. You're not trained- Since when? I meant you're not trained to work as part of this team. Yet it's hard to imagine anything topping Justice League or its equally ambitious sequel series, Justice League Unlimited. What? Like a bunch of super friends? More like a- Justice League. Taking place in the same continuity as Batman and Superman the Animated Series, this series expanded upon the DC Animated Universe with more heroes and villains. I'm going to enjoy this. While a dream come true for comic book fans, the show was also a great introduction for those not as familiar with the DC brand. You don't need to read the source material to get sucked in by its stellar action, refreshing humor, and epic storytelling. Forget about that silly Snyder Cut. This is the best version of Justice League out there. Mission accomplished. Number 16. Regular Show Any slacker who's ever held a boring job will likely appreciate the off-the-wall lunacy of Regular Show. You think he wants me to put the hurt on him? Yes, I do! Ah! 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 Centered on a blue jay named Mordecai and a raccoon named Rigby, regular show always starts off with an everyday work-related scenario. Yeah, we rule at setting up the chairs. Whether Mordecai and Rigby are setting up chairs or making hot dogs, they somehow always end up on wild misadventures involving mystical settings and beings. Why were you following me in that taxi suit? 
<sighs> My boss made me wear this. I'm from the video store. Your rental is overdue. Funny and bizarre, the series demonstrates that excitement can be found at even the most tedious of jobs, especially if you have a good friend by your side. Living without rules is awesome! Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Number 15, The Fairly Odd Parents. Butch Hartman's breakout series has one of the most inspired premises we've seen in any cartoon. A 10-year-old boy receives fairy godparents who grant him his wishes, which usually come with an ironic twist. Wow! A time stream! We're traveling 30 years into the past! Well, you know, you could have just wished yourself 10 minutes into the past and stopped yourself from melting the trophy in the first place! The setup made leeway for a ton of creative scenarios, taking Timmy Turner back in time, around the world, and even across the realm of television. Along the way, the show dropped numerous in-jokes and references that made Timmy's adventures just as fun for adults as they were for kids. Pause! And a Amazing! Well done, son! While the Fairly Odd Parents did go on much longer than it should have, those early years remain among Nickelodeon's finest. If you're looking for a Butch Hartman series that'll have you pleading for even more, there's always the widely underrated Danny Phantom. The only thing that has an expiration date here is you! Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Number 14, Phineas and Ferb. Growing up, every kid likely dreamed of spending their summer vacations building roller coasters in their backyards and traveling around the world. Big top China shop, off a cliff, you take a drop. On the sea, look at me, I'm talking to a manatee. Chances are that you just ended up staying inside watching TV, though. Phineas and Ferb takes all of our summer daydreams and turns them into reality, encouraging kids everywhere to make the most of their free time through the tool of imagination. It does so with appealing candy colors, joyous music, and timeless characters. Oh, and there's also a mad scientist and a secret agent platypus, which are both awesome. So if we're enemies again, does that mean- ah! Number 13, Bob's Burgers. An animated sitcom about a traditional family was nothing new when Bob's Burgers premiered. If anything, it sounded incredibly run of the mill, especially for Fox's animation block. Tina, you know you're on the grill. My crotch is itchy. Whoa. Okay, are you telling me as my daughter or as my grill cook? Um. As because my grill cook would never tell me that. The show almost immediately won over audiences, however, with its character-driven comedy, not to mention the characters themselves. It's hard to single out a favorite in the Belcher clan, all of whom are so eccentric, but feel all too real. The series was developed by Lauren Bouchard of Home Movies and Jim Dotrieve of King of the Hill. This is all my fault. What? You said it's all my fault! Oh. Okay. You can definitely see their signatures here, with working class parents and rambunctious kids. While the show certainly isn't without its wackier moments, the setting and scenarios give it a slice of life quality, or perhaps we should say slider of life. Where are we? Yeah, we are not in the same hall as we were a minute ago. It's like the end of The Shining in here. Where did everybody go? Wait a minute, this is a wedding. Number 12, Archer. While on the surface, Archer might look like a comedy about spies, it's actually a comedy about great characters. You wanna see crazy? No, I've seen that movie, and spoiler alert, it ends with a closet full of my suits on fire! Animated or not, Adam Reed's show has evolved into one of TV's finest ensemble pieces of egomaniacs, sociopaths, and cokey monsters. What <laughs> could possibly <laughs> be funny? <laughs> the phone! <laughs> It was Woodhouse's! It doesn't even matter what the setting or premise is. As long as any of these characters are involved, the dialogue's bound to be exceptionally crafted, the callbacks will be some of the sharpest since Arrested Development, and of course, the voice actors will play off of each other perfectly. Little Miss, uh... R2 double D2? Nice! <laughs> Thanks. Number 11, Samurai Jack. Gendy Tartakovsky created Samurai Jack partially in response to the action shows he watched growing up, feeling that they were too exposition and dialogue heavy. <laughs> Samurai Jack thus kept things simple, letting the eye-popping visuals do a majority of the talking. Just because its premise and characters were simple, though, doesn't mean that the show was lacking in depth. Ashi, you must! Ashi! 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 I love you! On the contrary, Tartakovsky demonstrated how a single facial expression can tell us so much more than a monologue. Tartakovsky would use the same approach for Star Wars The Clone Wars and Primal. 
Samurai Jack remains his crowning achievement, however. While the first four seasons treated its audience like adults, the fifth and final officially saw the series grow up, finishing Jack's journey on a deeply satisfying note. Number 10. Steven Universe Creator Rebecca Sugar challenged animation norms with Steven Universe, addressing sexuality, gender roles, and other coming-of-age themes that most kid-friendly shows wouldn't or couldn't speak of in the past. Dad, I broke a photo! It's okay, buddy. If every pork chop were perfect, we wouldn't have hot dogs. Steven Universe tackles these subjects in a way that's easy for children to understand, but also sophisticated enough to resonate with older audiences. Where did we go? What did we do? I think we made something entirely new. At its core, the series is about the importance of individuality, speaking out against those who force their ideals on others. What many view as perfection is often more flawed than we're led to believe. After all, if every pork chop were perfect, we wouldn't have hot dogs. As heavy as its morals are, Steven Universe is balanced out with a colorful visual style and a lovable protagonist whose wisdom lies in his innocence. It means if you try to make this empire perfect, if you just wipe away everything you see as flawed, you lose all the things that make you happy, like hot dogs. Number 9. Gravity Falls Yay! Let's pretend this never made WatchMojo's top 10 hated Disney animated shows list and appreciate Gravity Falls for the revelation in creativity it is. Earning comparisons to shows like Lost, Twin Peaks, and The Twilight Zone, creator Alex Hirsch has fashioned one of the funniest and most addictive paranormal shows of all time, as well as one of the best stories ever told about a brother and sister. Awkward sibling hug? Awkward sibling hug. Pat, pat. With numerous jokes and foreshadowing clues hidden in every frame, you'll want to watch each Gravity Falls episode multiple times to catch them all. Well, time to spill the beans. Rope. Beans. Number 8. Futurama While he may be best known for giving us the residents of Springfield, Matt Groening has since taken us to the 31st century in Futurama and the realm of fantasy in Disenchantment. You're magic, right? Yep. Not that kind of magic, though. Futurama in particular saw Graining and co-creator David X. Cohen grow as storytellers. What's with the eye? I'm an alien, all right? Let's drop the subject. Cool, an alien. Has your race taken over the Earth? While the series was mostly episodic, all the characters showed significant growth throughout the seasons, never succumbing to flanderization. Fry and Leela's ongoing relationship notably kept fans invested for over a decade. As humorous and inventive as the show could be, it's the emotional episodes that we remember best. He stole my clover, he stole my name, and he stole my life! <laughs> and now he broke my hand! His legend lives on! Between Fry's lucky clover and his dog Seymour, the episodes ran the gamut from bittersweet to devastating. Not bad for a cartoon with a robot whose catchphrase is... Bite my shiny metal ass! Number 7. SpongeBob SquarePants Although Nickelodeon produced a slew of successful cartoons during the 90s, SpongeBob SquarePants reached unprecedented levels of popularity for the network. It's not just a boulder, it's a rock. A rock. This yellow sponge remains Nick's unofficial mascot, standing out as the brand's Mickey Mouse. SpongeBob encompasses much of the surreal, occasionally risque humor you'd find in Ren and Stimpy or Rocco's Modern Life. Let's get naked! No, let's save that for when we're selling real estate. At the same time, the series possesses a sincere optimism more akin to Rugrats or Hey Arnold. This unlikely combo has made SpongeBob a favorite among children, parents, and even college students. The series was admittedly never quite the same after season three, when creator Steven Hillenburg left. If SpongeBob has taught us anything, though, it's that even a downhearted day can evolve into the best day ever. It's the best day. Number 6. South Park Most shows tend to peak sometime during their final couple seasons. With South Park, we'd argue that the show found its voice as the 90s came to a close and the new century ushered us into a brave new world. You really think that your civilization is better than ours? You people play games by killing animals and oppress women! It's better than a civilization that spends its time watching millionaires walk down the red carpet at the Emmys! South Park has seen us through some especially trying times. 
Even during the darkest hours, South Park has been there to provide a unique perspective and a laugh. Why are we fighting this war? There was a man in the office we didn't vote for. They didn't give me a choice. War is not my voice. While some of the best episodes are simply about the boys just being boys, others are like time capsules that capture the zeitgeist to a T. Even after surpassing its 20th season, South Park remains more experimental and thought-provoking than most long-running cartoons. Remember Chewbacca again? Oh, I love to remember Chewbacca! Oh, remember? 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 Hey, hey, hey! Remember when there weren't so many Mexicans? Oh, I remember! Wait, what? Number 5. Family Guy it's rare that a show is revived by a passionate cult following, but it's even rarer when a show comes roaring back more popular than ever. Welcome to Narnia, I'm Mr. Tumnus. Hey, give me back my shark, you goat bastard! Family Guy demonstrated the power of fandom, but that's not the only reason Seth MacFarlane's adult cartoons spoke to a generation of viewers. Nowadays, we're used to seeing send-ups of obscure, nostalgic properties everywhere. Family Guy was ahead of the curve, however, with many of its cutaway gags poking fun at random facets of pop culture. Bert, I wish you wouldn't drink so much, Bert. Well, Ernie, I wish you wouldn't eat cookies in the damn bed! Every moment tries to make you laugh, and at its height, Family Guy hit its target like a fistful of chicken feathers. The show would dip in quality somewhere down the line, but that's where American Dad started picking up the slack. And the number one dog on my fictitious dog list is Brian Griffin. Uh, do I know you? Stop pretending I don't exist! Number 4. Bojack Horseman The past two decades have given us a lot of animated shows that crept up on audiences with their dramatic impact, but none hit harder than Bojack Horseman. Well, nobody knows me like you. What started as a silly satire of Hollywood, we mean Hollywoo, matured into a character study about television's most complex soul this side of Don Draper. And you can call horsing around dumb or bad or unrealistic, but there's nothing more realistic than that. You never get a happy ending. Even before Me Too and Time's Up were trending, Bojack was already commenting on the toxic behavior that goes on behind the scenes of celebrity culture. It might be about a talking horse, but few shows are as brutally honest. Although it could feel like a Tennessee Williams play at times, Bojack also managed to tackle a wide range of different comedy styles, effortlessly transitioning between tragic comedy and lighthearted puns. Damn it, Todd! This was life or death! Stay with me! The bell said at 50 bucks, I'll be here when- Number 3. Rick and Morty If you took the inventiveness of Doctor Who, the characters of Back to the Future, and the meta humor of Community, you'd get Rick and Morty. I had to make a bomb, Morty. I had to create a bomb. What? A bomb? I'm gonna drop it down there and oh, get a oh, whole fresh start. Oh. Create a whole fresh start. That, 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 that's absolutely crazy. Come on, Morty. Just take it easy. Morty's gonna be good. Although the series is still young, Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland have created a universe where the possibilities are limitless, both in terms of sci-fi and comedy. I mean, I'd watch it, Morty, for at least 11 minutes of pop. The belching Rick and neurotic Morty's adventures can take them anywhere, from foreign planets to inside dreams to the multiverse's countless different realities. Wherever they go, we can't wait to go along for another ride. What happened? Oldest Rick trick in the book. Fake gun, shoot me, and stand off. Brilliant! Uh, yeah, G good thing I saw that note. Number two, Adventure Time. After several seasons on the air, most shows eventually settle into a predictable groove. With Adventure Time, however, people never know what to expect whenever they tune in. You know what time it is, buddy? Adventure Time! Yeah, man! <laughs> Will we get a surreal episode, a laugh out loud funny episode, an emotional episode, an epic episode, or an episode that changes everything we know about the characters we've come to adore? No, this is wrong. They're not coming back to life. They're still dead. My decorpse eater serum, it's incomplete. Whatever Adventure Time aspires to do, it almost always hits a bullseye with its one of a kind animation style, ingenious plotting, and endless creativity, transcending all the standard storytelling conventions we're used to seeing. <laughs> What a treat! Okay, well, I'll see you crimpy glimmers on triode flumpin' the diode. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick for the best cartoon of the century so far, here are a few honorable mentions. Would you make me the happiest guy on earth and accompany me to the mirror so I can give you a makeover so some other guy will go to prom with you? Oh, Abe, of course I'd love. No, make what now? Here, Miss Langtree, play something like this. Oh, like this? Uh, good enough. Hope they don't mind if I borrow. Yeah, I, I, I 
same mind. Come on, Dr. D. Is the screaming part of your plan? So, I hear your name is Gyro Robo. Correct. That is very not lame. <laughs> I won't even dignify this scene with my analysis. There's too much violence on TV anyway. And you chose to demonstrate that by smashing the TV in front of me. It was the responsible thing to do. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Avatar The Last Airbender Coming out at a time when most animated shows either went past their expiration date or ended abruptly with no closure, Avatar was something of an anomaly. I guess I was wondering, you're being an airbender and all? If you had any idea what happened to the Avatar. Uh, no. The series started incredibly strong and somehow ended even more strongly, delivering everything the creator set out to accomplish over the course of three epic seasons. These are the masters. Still think we can take them? Shh. I never said that. It's hard to think of another show, animated or live action, that so flawlessly balanced action, comedy, romance, drama, and serialized storytelling, always knowing exactly how much to give its viewers. The show's style, themes, and world building would inspire a sequel series with The Legend of Korra, as well as a spiritual successor of sorts with The Dragon Prince. Yet Avatar remains the gold standard for what's been a golden age of animated programming. I thought firebending was destruction. Since I hurt Katara, I've been too afraid and hesitant. But now I know what it really is. It's energy and life. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.